Hey, Bobcat Buckley here with another backhand form review with Frontline Dispatch. I have Sean here on the right, Amber Swall on the left. First, I want to thank you for your patience. It's taking me a minute to get this video. Part of the reason it took me so long to get this video, I watched your form like 20 times trying to figure out where uh, the flaws were because the form is very good. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll play this through once, and then I'll back it up and I will break it down. Okay, so side by side with Dan, I could probably put you guys on top of each other and it would be like very close. Um, normally this list over here on the right has a million things down it and I only have like five or six things to go over. So, so many things I like about your form. First of all you have your left hand off the disc which is always my first note. Uh, whenever I start a form review I tell people to get the left hand off the disc. You already have that off. Um, so that's great. Uh, the first thing I have, the uh, first real note I have uh, is this just a slightly, slightly smaller X step. And the reason I say this, um, it's not bad. A lot of people have, they'll have their X step like here and then all the way out here and they land on their toe and it turns their hips. You have a little bit of that here, uh, but not much. So your hips, let me zoom in here. Your hips are a little bit turned. Uh, we want to make sure that they're straight. Hips are a little bit turned here. We want to make sure that they're straight so that way we can get uh, the best usage out of them. You'll notice Dan here has, he's in his X step, still has his hips straight. Um, so it's just a slightly smaller X step and that will straighten out. You almost want your foot parallel with your plant foot, not landing on this toe so much. Um, you look up too early. So most people look down and look up too early. You only look up too early. So you do a good job of keeping your head on the target until your shoulder pushes your head. But then as you're pulling through, you want this back shoulder to push your head forward. You look forward almost as soon as you start pulling through. So you'll notice Dan, the disc is actually out of Dan's hand before he turns his head back. So the disc is out of his hand, and then he looks up. And Will Schustrick in one of his clinics used to say, uh, the person who looks up, the person who looks up too early gets to watch the disc go out of bounds. So <clears throat> I think a big, really the biggest flaw, the only real flaw that I could see that's causing like maybe a reduction in power um, is you're not, using, you're not engaging your hips. Um, and what I mean by that is you're not, your elbow should always be behind your hips. So as right here, the first movement we should see is your hips shifting. There's a little bit of that, but your elbow, <clears throat> your hips should still continue to lead your elbow, and your elbow is getting in front of your hips right there. And that's causing a little bit of rounding. If you watch Dan, so his hips are way in front of his elbow as he's pulling through. His hips are still technically in front of his elbow. And then that's where his hips turn, and he pulls this through. Another big thing is, and this will, again, this will take a lot of power off too, is you're opening up your hand and releasing the disc instead of letting it rip out of your disc, or out of your hand. So I usually go to the first frame where the disc is out of the person's hand, and I look at their hand, and as you can see here, your hand is open. 
Let me think. You can see how your hand is open, which means, and like it looks like it looks like your two fingers are touching. Those your two fingers are touching, but you want like a, a full fist as the disc rips out. And you can see that in the hand as well. You can see that how the di his hand is still closed and the disc rips out. So work on really keeping that hand closed all the way through the follow through as well. Like sometimes I can't see this first frame because it's too blurry, so I go to their follow through and I look at their follow through to see if Dan's is still in a fist. See? Um, oh, there was one other thing too that I, I was going to say to help you engage your hips. Um, Dan doesn't do it too much. So I'm going to pull up a video of Paige Pierce because I think Paige Pierce does a really good job of doing it. You do it a little bit, but I think you can do it a little bit even more, and a little bit earlier too. Um, bending this back knee will almost throw your hips into action. Um, oops, I didn't do that. So let me pull up that video real quick. All right, I'm gonna play the video, but I don't have the ability to like freeze frame it like I do because this is in YouTube. It's not in, um, it's not in, Adobe Rush, so I'm gonna try to get it as close to what I'm talking about as possible. You see, she really uses that back knee to throw her hips into action. And then she drives through. The only issue with that I see in her form is that she's not fully committing to the weight shift, so that can become an issue if you bend that knee too much but I like that she like over exaggerates that knee movement there so that's all I got for you um, I hope you learn from it I hope it helps you out um, I, I really do think you have really good form um, as I said I think I could probably put your video over Dan's video and you guys would almost match up so Actually, I'm going to do that for you. It's like to the reach back. You guys are really similar. And the pull through is where it changes. So, alright, there you go. There you have it. Hopefully we see you out there sometime.